It's turning around now, and it's turning your favor. It's turning in your favor right now. You gotta believe in it. It's turning around, saying, It's turning in your favor. Show! 
Jesus worship him. Father, we worship you. Lord, we celebrate him. Give him thanks. Give him praise. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. We exalt you. We worship you. Jesus, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Lord, we bless you. Father, we thank you. We bless you. Thank you. I say, give him thanks, give him thanks. Jesus, worship him. Somebody worship Jesus. Somebody give Jesus worship. Come on, exalt him. We give thanks. Amen. Father, we ask your presence to take to come over here. Amen. Father, we initiate your power, Amen. your authority, Amen. even in this place. Amen. And we ask that your dominion be felt here. Amen. May we see your healing power. May we experience your deliverance as never before. Amen. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Put your hands together for Jesus. <clears throat> Father, we give you thanks. Praise God. You're welcome to this glorious service. We said we'll be handling the deliverance of the firstborn, and we will be seeing the restoration of the dignity of the firstborn. But next week Sunday, we will be handling the issues of the firstborn. Today, we'll be looking at patterns. And next week Sunday, we will be handling the issues of the firstborn. And then, um, And I will I'll let you know that the firstborn is an office. The, the, the place of the firstborn is an office. And that office will be activated next week Sunday. Yes, it will be activated. I will do a physical swearing in the same way that Isaac did for Jacob. And he wanted to do it for his first son, Esau. So it is possible that you are first born, but there is no swearing in. That you are first born does not mean that um, automatically you walk into that office or the things of that office are yours. It doesn't mean so. Now, it takes a prophet. It will take a prophet to swear you into that office. And um, we see that Isaac had to do a swearing in for his firstborn. He did a swearing in for him. And um, he had to come with an offering. He came with a venison. 
And the father called for a venison and said, come. And when you come, I will pray you into that office. So the father had to pray him into the office of the firstborn. Praise God. So most times, you may not be able to enter into that office because uh, there is nobody to sway you into that office. So at times, it takes a prophet and somebody that understands the paraphernalia of the office of the firstborn to usher you in. So we have a lot of firstborns that are circumventing round that estate of the firstborn, around that office of the firstborn. But they don't have settlement and establishment. So next week Sunday, um, a lot of firstborn's office will be activated. Praise God. So even if your firstborn is not physically present and you have his picture, you can come with his photograph to church. Praise God. You can come with his photograph to church and then we will usher that firstborn into his office. Turn with me your Bible to Genesis chapter 20. Genesis chapter 20. Please, I'm inviting all of you here next Sunday for firstborn deliverance service and also to pray for me. All I need is your prayer. So we will do a celebration of birthday next Sunday. That's my own birthday. So all you need to do is to come stretch your hands. I will give you the prayer point. I will give you the prayer point. Praise God. I'll give you the prayer point and I tell you pray like this. So please come and um, stretch forth your hands. Pray for me. Praise God. What did I say? Genesis chapter 20. It's, um, it's a long chapter. But let's see how we can pull over it. I read from verse 1. And Abraham journeyed from thence toward the south country and dwelt between Kedesh and Shaw and sojourned in Jira. And Abraham said of Sarah, his wife, she's my sister. And Abimelech, king of Jira, sent and took Sarah. And Abraham said of, okay, sorry, verse 3. But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said to him, Behold, thou art but a dead man. For the woman which thou hast taken, for she is a man's wife. But Abimelech had not come near her. And he said, Lord, will thou slay also a righteous nation? Said he not unto me, she is my sister. And she, even she herself said, he is my brother. In the integrity of my heart and innocency of my hands have I done this. And God said unto him in a dream, yea. I know that thou didst this in the integrity of thy heart. For I also withheld thee from sinning against me. Therefore suffered I thee not to touch her. May God restrain you from sinning against him. Amen. Even when you have the desire to, may he restrain you. Amen. Now therefore, restore the man his wife. For he is a prophet, and he shall pray for thee, and thou shalt live. And if thou restore her not, know thou that thou shalt surely die, thou and all that are dying. Let me not go to the other verses. Look up.
We want to deal with the pattern of the bloodline. That's our topic this month. Dealing with the pattern of the bloodline. The bloodline pattern. I don't know whether you've heard this kind of message before, but this one, I'm looking from the Bible. I studied the Bible too. Look at it. And even if you've heard it anyway, pretend not to have heard. Well, the anointing on which this one is preached may be different from that one. A lot of things flow even as a pattern or as pattern. So many things flow as pattern. So many things take the shape of pattern. So many things. And until you discover that what you are going through is pattern in nature, you may not come into the fullness of your deliverance. Until you sit down and ask certain questions and go down the history line and begin to check the lives of uncles, aunties, ancestors, you may not understand that certain things are pattern in nature. You may not. You may not understand. What is a pattern? Pattern is defined as the regular and repeated way in which something happens. The regular and repeated way in which something happens. That's pattern. The regular and repeated way in which something happens. Number one, we see two words standing out. Regular and two, repeated. So, for a pattern to be established, we have to see these two words, regular and repeated. So, any time you see a regular thing and a repeated thing, know that a pattern has been established. Oh, my elder sister got married and it took her eight years to conceive. My immediate sister, it took her nine years to conceive. My third sister, it took her years to conceive. Oh, and I am the fourth. I don't need a prophet. It has been established that there is a pattern. Regular and repeated. Those two words are seen in this scenario. This is a pattern. And most times I pity men who don't have knowledge of pattern and they want to drive their wife to marry another one. Oh, I clap her hand for you. You suck her today. Drive her today. If you don't drive her today, you are not a man. That is when you will discover that you yourself, you have a problem. It is very easy for a man to blame his wife. 
ah, blame, 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 blame. But that man has never sat down and looked at himself and said, what is wrong with me? And he begins to check his roots and check the avenues of his life and look at the tree, his family tree, to begin to dissect, to check. Oh, this thing, it was there. This one, it was there. And even when the man sees it, he will foolishly and mumulishly abdicate himself from that error and still blame the wife. He will. You know what the Bible says about Isaac? The Bible says that Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife. Isaac never blamed Rebekah because Isaac knew that he came from a bloodline of delay. So he entreated the Lord. If it will be a quite good man, he will tell his wife, I will go out and look for another woman to give me a child. Isaac knew that this was pattern. And he needed to fight that pattern. I've never seen in the Bible where he blamed the wife. But he understood that it was a pattern. And he called his wife and said, let us fight this matter. And the Bible says he entreated the Lord. And said, okay, Lord, but the Bible didn't give us the things he said. But I know that the guy knew that there was a pattern matter. The guy knew. So he sought the Lord and God was found and his wife took him. Regular and repeated occurrences. I was talking with someone and um, he gave me a clear picture of a pattern in a family. I shouted. And this pattern is so strong that it affects the first male children of both sons and daughters of the family. Most times you can just see pattern affecting only firstborn males. But this one, the pattern affected even the sons of the daughters of the family. That the pattern went and affected grandchildren's first sons. I say, hey. And I followed the pattern closely. And I saw in a particular generation where a man that is a professor, his own first son was sent to England to study and he came back. He was sent to Canada to study and he came back. And they tried to get him a consultancy program in Unuyo and he fell out. He could not make it. They sent him back to Remedial. He couldn't make it. And as I speak to you right now, he is just floating. And his younger his siblings, the younger ones, one is in Canada, a doctor. Another one is an engineer in Britain. But this one, the first son of a professor. Where will the man keep his face? Where will he put his face? Oh, we left that one. And the, the woman said, come, 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 come. Leave the man. Come to this one. And we came here. His first son, academic dropout. He said, come. We went to the third son. His first son, blacklisted. We went to the fourth. The first son, nothing. Oh, we came to the first daughter of the family. The first son, abandoned. Ah, the second. Ah, the first sons. All of them. They are academic misfits. And all the women, they are riding high. The second born, they are riding high. So this is pattern. 
regular and repeated occurrences. You don't need a prophet. If a prophet comes, he's wasting his time. All the happenings are quite prophetic. So you can read it, you can interpret it by yourself. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. A woman gave me a call and said, Pastor, your message is very fine. I wish I can make myself available in your location. We are four. The first one, she will take him and there will be miscarriage. Four or five months. Second, third, including me, I am the fourth. All of us are married, but none of us has been able to bring forth. I said, this one, it is pattern. It's a regular and repeated occurrence. When something happens in a regular and repeated way. Oh, that one is not sickness. That one is a pattern. My father married three wives. And he died between the age of 75 and 80. And you are already 50. You have to. And already the two is a problem. You are on your way. You are of not being with the third one. That one is not yet a wife. But that one is desiring to be a wife. Between 50 and 55. You are going to marry that one. You have not escaped what your father escaped. That is a pattern. And everybody in the family is having oh, children out of wedlock. It is, a, it is a succession. They are doing it. It is happening. Oh, before a man will come to see the family, somebody must take in. Oh, born one, born two, born three, some born four, some five. And nobody has come to pay until people. You have to carry. And it will be out of battle. The man will just continue and say, this family, they are full of drunk art. Let me take a carton of snap and go there. I will just carry a carton of snap and sit down. You people talk on the table of drunkenness. And he dropped his head, I'm coming back. <laughs> and then, um, since he left, he has not returned. There is no return flight. Hear me. These are issues of pattern. And let us go back to the Bible. I'm beginning to examine some pattern in the bloodline of Abraham. Abraham and David now gives us a setting to discuss the issue of pattern, of family pattern. Number one. Looking at some sin pattern in Abrahamic family. Where we read in Genesis chapter 20, from that verse 1 to 8, we see the pattern of lies. We see the sinful pattern of lies. We see it. Sarah was a very beautiful woman. Fair to look upon. Very, very beautiful. And fair to look upon. The Bible says it came to pass as they were about to enter Jira. Kai. And Abraham turned and looked at his beautiful wife. I said, this woman, you will put me in trouble. You are too beautiful. Please, if anybody asks you, tell the person that you are my sister. Don't tell them you are my wife because it is possible that they may kill me. He said, no problem. 
So, while they entered, ah, the people of Jira spotted a beautiful woman walking with an old man. That is the problem. That's the problem. Some of you put yourselves into problem. Especially Igbo businessmen. Some of those businessmen in Onicha. In Newe. You are 50. You have spent time to make money. 50, 55. You qualify to be great. In your own autonomous Where? In your own autonomous community. <laughs> when you drive through Igbo land, you will see the autonomous <laughs> Praise God. Ah, that is when that man will remember that the young girl has just returned from the university. And this one is about 22, 23 years. And say, yes, I need that one. That one will come and sit down and look at the business, look at the shop, gather the money, take inventory, do everything. Oh, he's ordering goods from Dubai, from everywhere. That one, that one, Nabukuru, so he go look, now she go look the business. Hmm? And that, the man is 50 55. He stands up and he walks like a mighty man, and there is a chicken running by his side and this young chick becomes a threat becomes a very big threat to him so we put ourselves into certain troubles we allow the matter of inequilibrium to exist and once you do that kind of marriage you begin to have hypertension because certainly you are marrying that woman for other young men. Not for yourself. You can have the money to fund her. Oh, and other young men can have the pleasure to give to her. And people ask you, you are married? say, yes, I'm married. I'm married to a small girl. It is your casualty. It is not an honor. It is not an achievement. That is why Isaac married Rebecca as a young girl. Even when Isaac developed blindness, Rebecca could see. She was running up and down, fixing things, adjusting things in the house. When he couldn't walk, Rebecca was running about, killing goat, removing the skin of the goat to prepare the skin for Jacob. And this man was one place, was doing venison. He was seated one place. Please, I did not say don't. In fact, you can be 60 and marry 20. There is one man in Delta State that is anointed for that. He has the anointing for those kind of things. You can meet him and tell him to transfer such grace to you. But I'm telling you that it is to your disadvantage. It does not work. I'm not discouraging you, but it does not work. It has its own advantage. And even if it has an advantage, the advantage is infidecimal. As a matter of fact, that is child molestation. Naptop should arrest such people. Praise God. I said, Praise God. You are not confident of yourself because you are threatened. You are afraid. Oh, this woman, where is he now? Where is he? You travel to America. You are making call 24 hours. Where are you? That sound I'm hearing. Which sound is that?
Okay. Let my younger sister come and stay with you till I come back. Who did this to you? Because you put yourself in a tight corner. May you marry and sleep well. I said, may, may you marry and have peace of mind. The same thing in the reverse. When a woman marries a younger man, that woman cannot sleep. I'm telling you the truth. You can't. You say it is the will of God. Oh, the Lord spoke to me and said I should marry her. And the woman is 10 years older than the man. When did the Lord speak that kind of thing? Which Lord is that? That is the Lord of Mbubru, Mbubru Lord. It is not the Lord that I know. The Lord cannot give you headache and heartache. Please. In fact, if you're a woman, don't even allow such love to develop. Because it is to your disadvantage. Don't allow it. I beg you, don't allow it develop for a second. Because it will be to your disadvantage. Even the one that the man is older than the woman by 10 years, the man is still tired. Is it that one that you are older by 10? And you say, the Lord. The woman sees a younger woman stand without her husband. And they are smiling and talk, talking younger things. <laughs> the heart is broken completely. Please, I beg of you. Let somebody not deceive you in the name of the Lord said, I saw, I dreamt in a vision. All those things don't stand the test of marriage. They don't stand. As even the one you've seen your 10 years. If the Lord does not help you, you run. Not to talk of that one. So he brought about life. He said, when they ask you, tell them we are sisters. And the woman said, that man is my brother. And they asked Abraham. Abraham said, she's my sister. Okay. And Abimelech said, that is good. Sister, brother thinks, okay, sister, come back. <laughs> Let us keep brother one place. He carried. And give a room to sister. That night, as Abimelech was making up his mind to visit the sister. The Lord appeared in a dream. And said, Abimelech, you are a dead man. You are what? This one, listen. Abimelech did not even chike. There was no chiking. He just brought and said, stay here. I'm the king of Jira. Stay here. No communication. Yet too. He didn't even say, look at how your legs are. Oh, see your cheeks. Abimelech did not even make those statements. But God said to Abimelech, you are what? That the one that has climbed the woman is what? You are a corpse. You are a corpse. In fact, no, it's not a corpse. By this time, he stinketh. If you are even conceiving and you have already carried, oh, it is not until people stand at the graveside 
and the whole burial program that somebody is dead. When someone conceived in his mind, oh, that this married woman that is walking, doing like this, doing like this, I should have my way. That man, there is a tombstone on top of him. May you not be a dead man while you are alive. God told him, Dad! Abimelech! I stop you from doing it. You wanted to do it, I stop you. Abimelech, I stopped you. You wanted. And I'm praying the God of heaven. When Satan overpowers your will, and you want to do a thing because your will has been overpowered. May God stop you from it. Amen. May God stop you. So God had to stop Abimelech. And Abimelech restrained himself. When he woke up, he looked through the window. He saw brother and sister spotting. The word spotting is different from spotting. It is a marital word. Are you hearing me? It's not just that they were spotting. Oh, children are here. I'm not. Let it just remain at that level. It's a marital word. Spotting. It was not that they were doing spot. Don't me work a window. No, 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 no. That is not what they were doing. <laughs> Ooh. Children won't understand that song. No, it is not that this one was a marital program. Abimelech said, Yeah, bro, sister, hear me. He called Abraham. He said, I don't understand the spot you were doing and what you told me. He said, Well, I was afraid. And I told my <laughs> sister to say, that uh, we are not sisters. <laughs> ah. And the Lord said to Abimelech, for this man's wife whom you've taken, the man is a prophet. Restore him his wife. Restore him. Now, there is a certain benefit you derive as a prophet. There are certain things in your life that are untouchable as a prophet. Are you listening to me? When the prophetic hand is upon your life, there are things that are no known cannot be taken from you. Therefore, Sarah was delivered from that contamination because he was connected to a prophet. And I pray for you today. Oh, because of prophetic connection, may you be free from certain things that want to touch your life. He told a lie. In chapter 12 of Genesis, in chapter 12, the same Abraham, Laila, you see from verse 10, there was a great famine at that time and they decided to go down to Egypt. He went to sojourn there. The Bible says the famine was grievous in the land. Verse 11, and it came to pass when he was come near to enter into Egypt that he said unto Sarai, his wife, behold now, I know that thou art a fair woman to look upon. And may I tell you that this is the problem of fair women. Till today. Look up. Till when? Till today. It is the problem of fair women. Fair women easily get attention than dark women. There is nothing you can do if you like go and change your color. And that is the truth. Fair women get 
easy attention. And you, see, you, you meet certain men, they say, ah, me, I don't want to marry a fair woman. I don't, I don't have the anointing for disturbance. I don't have the anointing for disturbance. I won't be able to contend it. Because they are sinusure of eyes. Ye yelicious men, ye ye men, always focus their eyes. Lustful men, men that are easily distracted. So Abraham had that problem. And he said, I know you are beautiful. Why did you go to marry somebody that you could not contend with the beauty? He said, and it shall come to pass, in verse 12, when the Egyptians see thee, that they shall say, this is his wife. Oh, and they will kill me, but they will save their life. Can you imagine? Say, I pray thee, that thou art my sister, that it may be well with me for thy sake. And my soul shall live because of you. So the short story is that when they entered the land of Egypt and they saw Sarah as beautiful as she was and they asked, who is this man? Says my brother. That was number one license for adultery. Number one. A young man that was under my tutelage some years ago, called me and said, Pastor, I have a problem. Advise me. I said, what's your problem? He said, that woman I went to marry that I told you. I said, that's your wife? He said, yes. I said, okay. He said, my wife has done so much. I said, tell me one that he has really done. He said, imagine I am on the same bed with my wife. And my wife carried her phone and is chatting with a young man. And I pretend to be sleeping. They are, they are laughing. And I, and I forced the phone and collected from her. Pastor, I saw rubbish. I said, tell me one. I said, my wife texted the man. The man asked him, are you married? She said, no, I am not married. He said, what of the dark man I used to see you with? He said, it's my brother. <laughs> Pastor, what should I do? I said, you know what to do. <laughs> You, you know what to do. You don't need to wait for me to ask me what to do. You know what to do. Ah! The guy said a lot of things in the text. He said, ah! That the woman said, ah! Please, let it be like that. I, I, I am chatting with you because I am lonely. And the guy asked her in the text, but you are sleeping by your wife now. I, oh, sorry, your husband. He said, that one is not a husband. He said, brother, he's causing me loneliness. How do we sleep? Can I tell you something? Don't start a marriage you are not ready to stay with till tomorrow. Don't go into it. Listen to me. Don't. I beg of you, don't. Don't go into it. May I tell you, if you look at the woman, because, number one, you marry for conjugal reasons. You marry for relationship purpose. And you marry for destiny purpose. For destiny purpose, I'm a pastor. Oh God, give me a good wife. Number one, a wife first, two. 
that will blend with my destiny and my calling. Are you hearing me? Not necessarily that your wife must be a pastor. But that woman can support your calling and may not be a pastor. Are you hearing me? It is not a must that the pastor's wife must be a pastor. That is the mistake of plenty of people. Your wife can be an intercessor. Hmm? Can be an intercessor. And she's the one keeping the church on her knees. But doesn't have the skill of preaching. But in terms of prayer, even that man standing on the pulpit cannot rival her. Is somebody hearing me? Oh, but your wife can also be a preacher. And can even preach more than you. So in destiny making, you need somebody that complements your destiny. But more so, you are not just marrying destiny. You are marrying a physical being. You can look at his face and be happy. Oh, and you are not okay with the face of the man you are marrying. You look at the man's face. You say, Lord Jesus, visit me, visit me, visit me. Lord, Lord, visit me. Please, don't even start to enter. Don't say, oh Lord, I will use your sandpaper and, and sand his face. Don't even go there. Because you will commit adultery. Oh, as I'm talking now, I'm not talking from heaven. I'm standing here talking to you. One on one. Oh, you look at the man's face. The way the man sleeps, when he sleeps. Maybe both of you are talking and he sleeps. The face go down like that one. And you ask yourself, how long will I cope with this kind of thing? Please, don't go into that marriage. Don't go into it. Because that thing will continue. You commit adultery. Oh, the man. The man is nice, so, but he mixes tenses and he doesn't know how to place diction correctly. If he wants to say savior, he says savior, savior. Ah, the use and the Gentiles. <laughs> they say, what's the name of the man? He said, the man is Mr. Yerubabel living in Jerusalem. And you, the wife, you do like this. I would have loved to marry him, but is this Yeruba Yeru Bell something? <laughs> Please, walk away. Because tomorrow, when you meet the one, oh, that is saying, I, 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 I'm just coming back from Jerusalem, and I saw the Gentiles and the Jews, and I made the Yeruba Bells. You, you, I know you, you commit adultery with them. Because that is what you like. So what you don't like, don't start. Don't do what? Don't start. When you are not confident to tell someone, this is my husband, that is the beginning of the failure of that marriage. Is somebody hearing me? Maybe the man cannot dress well. Oh, life is so bad with the man. Oh, that even when he wears, he has body odor. You now put up a song. I put him in front. Me, I am behind. See, some of those worship songs is because the woman is tired. He put him in front. When that confidence is not there, you are not bold, you are not proud enough. Oh, the man is always coming to church first. The woman comes later. It's later. 
There are a lot of things that can open people up to morality, even in marriage. When the confidence of what you have is not there. Abraham said, Sarah, let me call Sarah in our language, Sarah. He said, Sarah is my sister. And there are a lot of people that are operating in that dimension so that they can do what they want to do properly. I've seen them. The wife can stumble in a location and meet her husband. The husband sees the wife and take cover. He has seen an armed robber. Take cover. Because you are not proud and bold enough to present the woman. There is inverted comma open and close. So he told another life and sold out his wife. The same thing happened. Oh, when these things happened, Isaac was not born. Isaac was not alive. Isaac was nowhere to be found. Isaac was not in their womb. Isaac was not in the lines. In Genesis chapter 26. In the same place that his father lied. In Jira. Oh, his son Isaac came to that place. Genesis chapter 26 from verse 6. And Isaac dwelt in Jira, the same place that his father dwelt. Verse 7. And the men of the place asked him of his wife, and he said, She is my sister. For he feared to say, She is my wife. Lest, lest said he, the men of the place should kill me for Rebekah, because she was fair to look upon. These are the things we are saying. When his father told the lie, he was not there. His father was in a location and lied. And he too went to the same location because of famine. And also lied the same lie of his father. His son told the same lie years after in the same place. You could see a pattern of lies. Oh, you could see a pattern of lies. If a man's name is Lai Muhammad and he lies, what will be the name of his son? May God deliver you from this pattern. I say, may he deliver you from this pattern of lies. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In Genesis chapter 37, before Genesis 37, something happened in Genesis chapter 27. And when Abraham, oh sorry, when Isaac called for the venison and asked to bless his firstborn, Esau, the Bible says his wife. His wife, the wife of Isaac, Rebecca, oh, colluded with their second son, Jacob, and said, let us tell a lie. Let us do what? Let us tell a lie. Let's tell a lie. We are going to lie. So Jacob and his mother lied. Hear me, if you are a child sitting there listening to me, May you not follow the footsteps of your mother. Because your mother could be very, very deceptive. And wants to use you to play certain games with your father. And you are a child. You are growing up. Don't participate. Oh, your mother is going out. To the wrong place and tell you when your father comes back, tell tell daddy eh, 
my phone is not good and drop the phone at home. Tell daddy that I'm there. Evil mothers. Oh, they, won't, they don't want you to say, oh, we did not carry the phone. They just vehemently. The woman can plan her activities over time and tell the children, don't charge this phone of the house for some days. The battery became flat. You say, I'm going out. Oh, you people hold my phone. Can you see skill and technology? You people be with my phone so that I can call you. Tell daddy that I left my phone with you because your own was not charged. And this charging matter took place one week ago. When she stopped the children from charging phone. Don't follow your mother. Jacob followed his mother. God has a way of doing whatever he wants to do. You must not make yourself available for it. Oh, if you don't present yourself, God has a thousand and one billion ways to do whatever is in his mind that he's willing to do. So he called his son and said, you and I, we are going to act this drama. Oh, young man, hear me and hear me well. Your mother may entice you with gifts. Your father may not have the salary and the same amount of money that your mother has and your mother decides to shower you with whatever she calls like love. Buy you clothes, buy you shoes, buy you a lot of things, take care of you ah, at the expense of your father's downfall. Please hear what I'm saying. Hear. I've been a pastor since the age of 18. When I talk, I don't talk like a fool. I talk as someone that has sat down and has done counseling with families. If you know my age today, then I will tell you that I started pastoring at the age of 18. And at 18, the married brought problems to me. So I have dexterity when I make a statement. I don't, I don't say things because I just want to say. I say them out of experience. And from the Bible standpoint. Have been in gospel matters right from my youthfulness. Oh, I didn't wake up into it. Don't join your mother. Let her act her drama alone. Let your father not bring you into a thing that will bring a curse on your head. Disassociate yourself from it. Somebody praise God. So they acted the drama. How can a wife tell her husband lies? And call the son and pack it. He said, go and tell your father, I am Esau, your face born. Oh, the lies of Jacob was feared by his mother. And there are a lot of mothers. Oh, your daddy does not want to give us money. Okay, go and tell your daddy, oh, that uh, you are having a photosynthesis analysis in the lab tomorrow. Tell your daddy that... Uh, the lecturer, your science lecturer, says you should store osmosis and diffusion in a bottle. May you not be an illiterate father. Oh, daddy, tomorrow yeah, there is going to be an experimentation of Boyle's law. Oh, and that man that is a mumu, say, Boyle's law, how does it look like? Oh, it will boil tomorrow. How much? So that the children can go to school. Occasioned by the lies of their mother. So you can have money to buy shoe. You can use your children as a front to get certain things. May you not be such a mother. What is the pleasure of a wife telling lies to her husband? You lie 
collect money. So what you are wearing is lies. You are wearing lies. To you, you have money. You buy handbag. You buy Intorica. You buy the other one. You buy the other one. You buy everything at the expense of lies. Hear me! If it does not give to you, leave it. God will make a way for you. Don't tell lies for anything. Two of them, they told their lies and that was good. Oh, years after, in Genesis chapter 37, some years after, ah, this lie, it was flowing as a pattern. It became a bloodline matter. Genesis 37 from verse 31. From verse 31 to 35. And they took Joseph's coat and killed the kid of the goat and dipped the coat in the blood. Let it flow now. And they sent the coat of many colors and they brought it to their father and said, This have we found. Oh. He said, We know not whether it is the coat of your son or not. 33. And he knew it and said, It is my son's coat. An evil beast had devoured him. Joseph is without doubt rent in pieces. And Jacob rent his clothes and put sackcloth upon his loins and mourned his son many days. Can you see lies? Oh, that the children did to him. Can you see that all his children came together? And they formulated an international lie with NAPDAC registration number and presented it to their father. It is the same thing that himself and his mother did to their own father. Oh, he had an hypertension. He carried sackcloth. He mourned for days and was weeping. Lies. When lies went into international platform. <laughs> when life was exacerbated. Beloved, there are things that run in the bloodline. Oh, there are people seated here. If you catch them with a woman like this, naked, do hmm? you know what? You ask them, you are with a naked woman. He will tell you. Oh, the Lord said, naked did I come and naked will I go. I'm telling you, you catch somebody with evidence. You can defend that evidence. That is when you know that this brother that did engineering is a lawyer. He was called into the bar of lies. Oh, these things are not normal. David said, in sin did my mother conceive me. This one is resident in me. It is with us. Yes! You can be a pastor. Oh, you can be saving God. You can be a chorister. But you are a lie, Mohammed. You have it in your blood. It is in your DNA. The lies you lie is not a mistake. This one, you are a fabricator, a manufacturer of lies. When people want to tell lies, they come to you. You are a consultant of lies. They come to me to consult you. Oh, in this matter, what do I do? You say, um, how did it happen? It happened like this. Okay, you beat your head. You hit your hypothalamus where your anointing is. The thing resurrects. You now dish out to the people because you're a consultant of lies. Jacob. Oh, he deceived his father. But when he ran to Laban, ha, 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 ha. Ah, when you are a game master, don't worry. One day as a game master, you will meet coach. You'll meet who? 
when a game master met with coach. It is good. You are a coach, you can dribble. But when you meet Maradona, you too, you will learn new skills. So we saw Okocha meet Maradona. And then the dribbling became too much. Jacob said, please release my wife. I'm going. I have lied, but I have seen a liar. Jacob confessed. Me, I have lied, but my lie, lie has not come to your own Laban. Laban, you're a Labanese. I'm leaving your house. I'm tired. I'm tired of your lies. There was a man I sent to buy me a car. That man was an armed robber. I did not know. I'm telling you. I gave him money. I said, get me a car. Hi, somebody came and told me. <laughs> oh, you have lost that car. You cannot get it. You know? One day we prayed. We were praying. Say, oh God, this money I took a loan. They are deducting the loan. I need this car. One day he called me from Cotonou with a strange number. Call me. He mentioned his name. He said, ah, I'm your man. You know, me, I'll be bad guy. I'm a thief, but I cannot steal from you. I don't know. I've attempted to steal from you. But I saw that you're a man of God. I cannot. He called the name of somebody. He said, that one I've collected his money. He's an armed robber. He's a fornicator. Me too are the fornicate. I chop him money. Meet me in Cotonou by so and so day. I will be at Semeboda. Come there. I will take you and cross. And I entered Semeboda. He carried me. And we went to the cast stand. He said, pick any car of your choice. I pick. And he brought the car back to me. He handed over and said, you, you're a clean man. Me, I am an armed robber. You see, all those people, they have reported me to you. Tell them they can never get their money. But you, you're a child of God. I give you your money. Your way pure. You say, your way pure, you're a pure man. Telling you, he said to me, he said to me, he said, you see me, when people want to lie, they come to meet us. We teach them lies, but I cannot lie to you. Sir, there are certain sins that are bloodline matters. It is in families. It is where? It is where? It is in family. And may I tell you, when you want to marry or your daughter or your son want to marry, please don't stop in the church. She's in the choir. She's in the Sunday school. Take a walk to the family and find out what are the things that run in this family. Are you listening to me? That is why in those days, our parents, they were not having problem. Because they knew the family. They were not spiritual. But they walk in to find out certain things in families. There are patterns in families. It runs. It runs. Delay. Marital delay. Some other delays are in certain families. Sir, if you have opportunity to enter that family and make inquiry, you would have seen that thing. And you will know whether to stay or not. In certain families, certain things don't last. Ask questions. Go to places. Find out. Don't end in the church. Because a lot of liars have entered the church and covered their hair, remove earring. They remove it. Oh. The brother that is coming to you is a rapist. And in their family, it is there. Oh. You are going to marry a brother and he has not dealt with that foundation. He has not dealt with that family pattern. It's not there. There are things that are in families. They are bloodline. Ooh. And how do you come out of such things? Oh, you need to pray and ask the Lord to show you. 
Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. We're talking of bloodline. Number two. That family suffered delay. Oh, and most of these ones on delay, we will talk about it next Sunday. When we are dealing with the issue of the first born, the deliverance of the first born, next week Sunday. Please, I beg of you. You can even go out of this episode, but that one next Sunday, bring your first born. That is your first born son. You know, this is your son, first born. You will hold your son and remove certain pattern from your son. That you can look at yourself and you have seen this pattern. You saw it in your family. Things that were running. Your uncles. You can deal with those patterns. And take them away. Delay. Abraham had delay in childbearing. Abraham had his first child at 100. Hey. 100 years. Hundred, and I believe that when the child will cry, and Sarah will carry the child throughout the night, the house is hot, and say, "My Lord," he used to call. She used to call him, "My Lord." My Lord. Oh, Isaac, for me, let me sleep small. That is when he will put gear four of snoring. <laughs> Oh, it's not because the man wouldn't have loved him. But at that age, you cannot disturb him to wake up and carry a child. At that age. He would have loved to carry. Are you hearing me? He would have loved to. There's a certain age that certain things cannot hold. That certain things cannot flow. So that delay came. Oh, and Isaac... The Bible says Isaac had his own son, Esau, and Jacob at the age of 60. He was 60. He was 60. He was 60. Waited for another 40 years. For another 40. And there was a delay. That delay followed him. And Jacob went to marry and it was the same thing in the case of Rachel. Rachel, there was a delay. May I tell you that Leah had all her children. I think it was the last child of Leah. That, that was when the Lord opened the womb of Rachel. Leah had finished business with childbearing. Before Rachel's womb was opened. Now, if you check certain homes, you will see the issue of delay. Delay in marriage, delay in conception, delay in academics, delay in having a job, delay in finishing school, delay in everything. Everything you start, there is a delay. For you to even have admission, delay. To graduate, delay. This one, delay. When one thing goes, for another one to come, it takes a long time for it to come. So these things are pattern. It runs in houses. And if you want to come out of it, then you have to address the family pattern that is behind it. So you could see it there. And maybe somebody is going through a certain pattern called delay and you are blaming your wife for that pattern. You are blaming your husband. No. Check your house. There could be a delay and if you stand up to deal with that matter and issue of delay, then speed will begin to come. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Another thing I discovered in that bloodline is that all of them did not make it inside. They were traveling to a foreign land. They were not blessed where they were. They had to move to a foreign land. Abraham left Haran. And even when he left, there was famine. 
and he needed to go to Egypt. And um, he left Egypt and needed to enter the land of Jirah to go and stay. His own son, Isaac, also was in the land of Jirah. Jacob needed to go to Laban. Joseph needed to go to Egypt. They needed to go out. In their land, there was no prosperity. There was nothing. They needed to move. And that is why a lot of persons are moving, relocating. Relocating. Oh, relocation may be a pattern. It may just be for certain people. Relocation may be a pattern for certain people. You discover that you have to go to Lagos. Ah, you have to move to Abuja. You have to go to Kanu. You have to go to Jaws. You have to go to a certain place. Where all of you are, nothing is working. Somebody needs to make a motion. Somebody needs to make a movement and go to a certain place for something to work. So for how long that you can graduate and stay and nothing shows up until you go. You can go and start to be a boy boy. You can live to live with somebody. You can relocate to another place to start a micro project for something to happen. May God deliver you from such pattern in the name of Jesus. Amen. Two things before we pray. I saw the pattern of favor and disfavor. Some of these things, we will deal with them in the deliverance of the firstborn next Sunday. Ishmael was rejected. Ishmael was rejected. Ishmael had no favor. The favor came upon Isaac. Ishmael was rejected. Esau was rejected. And Jacob was accepted. He said, Esau I hate. And Jacob I love. Oh! Reuben! was disinherited. He was rejected. And some other person had to fill the place of Reuben. Oh, this one is purely the firstborn matter. We will deal with it next Sunday on the pattern of the firstborn. The firstborn of these families were rejected. And they never had a place. Do you know that that matter had to stretch until it came to the time of David. Absalom was rejected. Adonijah was rejected. But Solomon was accepted. There was no favor for the firstborn. So it's a pattern. I have seen a lot of families where the firstborn of family, they are, de oh, they, they, they are depending on the second. They are depending on the second. It is the second brother. It is the other brother that is assisting, that is helping. But the firstborn males, they are nowhere to be found. Oh, you could deal with that pattern so that doors can open, not just for you, but for your own firstborn son. So that he will not be caught in that whip of battle. So the Bible tells us that even when Joseph brought his children, to come and see his father in a farewell ceremony. Ah, the father jokingly, ah, Joseph, oh, I did not think that my eyes shall see you. Wow. Wonderful, Joe. You have this blessed two boys and Joseph wittingly, because Joseph knew that this his father was a beneficiary of fraud. Joseph knew that Isaac, his grandfather, was a beneficiary of a spiritual fraud too. And Joseph sensed the pattern. So, he brought Manasseh, his first son, and put in the right hand of his father. And brought Ephraim the second. And put at the left hand of his father. But, when the father wanted to bless them, the father jokes the post. 
The father juxtaposed and how did the man know? Because at the time that Joseph did this, his eyes were dim and he did not see. But when he entered into the prophetic office with closed eyes, oh sir, a prophet's eyes does not need to open physically. He could be blind, but he is seeing. He is seeing. The Bible says when the wife of Jeroboam sent, when the, Jeroboam sent his wife to meet prophet Ahijah. And when they went there with the baby, Ahijah was blind. And the woman changed her garment so that they will not know that it is Jeroboam's wife. Immediately she entered. In the blindness of the prophet, the man asked, O oh, wife of Jeroboam, May God open your eyes. May the Lord open your eyes. May God open your eyes to see. Beyond physical impediment. So the man, Jacob was a prophet. Jacob was a prophet. Jacob was not just a father. He was a prophet. When biological fathers enter into prophetic anointing, there are a lot of things that will not be hidden from their eyes about their children. Mommy, as you are seated here, don't just sit as a mother because your children will rubbish you. May you carry some prophetic acumen whereby you can say certain things to your daughter and call the name and tell your daughter this person in your class, this man, this man, what are you doing with that man? Based on prophetic anointing. So he did like this. And the right hand went to the younger. Oh, sir. This one is not just favoritism. I call this one the pattern of familiar spirit. It was a familiar spirit. Oh, it was a pattern, but familiar spirit was at the center. That Abraham bequitted to Isaac. Isaac bequitted to Jacob. Jacob bequitted to who? To Joseph. He bequitted to Joseph. And now Joseph. Joseph wanted to change the pattern. He wanted it to return to normal. He wanted the firstborn to inherit the office of the firstborn. Jacob stood, oh sorry, Joseph stood his ground. And he wanted to change it. He said, no. This pattern is wrong. This familiar spirit must end in this family. And he came as a son to change it. But his father did not give him the opportunity. Oh, he, he, he went with his hand and carried his father's hand. The father said, leave my hand. I know what I am doing. Kai. My father. Oh, Joseph said, my father, it is not so. It is not so. He began to cry. I am looking for parents oh, that on Sunday next week, they will cry for their sons. They will cry for their children. And say, I am a father. Let this pattern not continue. Let this pattern not continue in my father's house. I want a change. How can my first sister be seated? Others are married. She is still seated here. Others are settled. My firstborn brother, he's still struggling. He ought not to be here. Look at all of us. We contribute money and give to him. I am the one that pays the house rent of my brother. I pay the school fee of his children. It ought not to be so. Father! It is not so. Joseph cried out. The father said, No need of crying. I know what I am doing. Remove your hand. Oh, there are children that have gone to remove the hands of the fathers. The hands of the ancestors are on certain children. They are on this generation. Yes, they have imposed the familiar spirit. They have imposed their idiosyncrasies. They have imposed their weakness. They have imposed their failures. They have imposed their error on the younger generation. Oh, I call it imposition of error by the fathers. 
There are fathers that have imposed error. The error of barrenness. The error of delay in conception. The error of delay in destiny arrival. It is an imposition. He put his hand and said, you can't remove it. You can't change it. And hear me well today. Whoever is acting a father or an ancestor and has imposed a norm, he has imposed a pattern. You want to change the pattern, but the hand of a father is on that pattern. And he's saying this pattern cannot be changed. Today, I remove that hand. When we stand up to pray, oh sir, you will enter your father's house and lift the hand of the pattern. The hand that has enforced the pattern. Oh, Jacob was a prophet. But do you know what? As a prophet, there was a limitation in him. What was that limitation? It was the limitation of the error of the family. He carried it. And he was the next prophet to transfer it. Oh, will he correct it and return it to the normal? He, he was a beneficiary. Oh, so he will not return it ah, to the original firstborn. He will carry that error. And allow that pattern to continue. Oh, you are going to pray today. My father, any pattern that I am sustaining that wants to enter into my children, do you know you are a gateway? You can stop it. You can stop it. Hear me, you can stop it. There are things you need to stop so that your children will not come to do it. I am telling you nothing but the truth. If you are a mother and you are a guru guru mother, you need to end that pattern. Because your daughter may inherit it. You are a father. And there is woo -woo in you. Ah, your son may come to inherit that pattern. You better end it to them. If not, your child will take it. Joseph. As a son understood the pattern. And he wanted to stop it. But his father told him, you cannot. Remove your hand from me. And uh, some of us seated here, we have stood up to remove the hands of the ancestors that have enforced the pattern. And the ancestors don't allow us to remove it. Oh, this morning, oh, you will stand your ground. I will stand behind you as a father. His father did not support him. His father had supported him. He would have removed it. But even if you don't have a father, I stand as a spiritual father behind you. Every pattern that has been enforced on you, on your brother, on your sister, on your generation, on your father's house, on your mother's house. That pattern is broken! It is broken. Oh, mine who lays hands on you. Because the person that lays hands on you can transfer pattern. Hear me and hear me well. It has nothing to do with a pastor. Jacob was a prophet. But that pattern of favoritism, that familiar spirit was in him. Oh, you can meet a pastor who is still committing fornication and put his hand on your head. And brother, I'm telling you that the spirit of immorality was not in you. And because the pastor has not dealt with the foundation of immorality, in his life and in his bloodline. As he puts his hands on you, it, it transfers it to you. Oh, when Jacob put his hand upon Manasseh, he transferred what was in him to Manasseh. Manasseh inherited the office of the firstborn just the same way in, he inherited. He transferred that same pattern into him. Oh, people don't lay hands on my head unnecessarily. I must know your pedigree. I must know that you have fought your altars and your foundation. I must know that there are certain things you are not a victim to. Because if I expose my head to you, you can transfer something to me. Sir, it is not how a man is gyrating on the pulpit that I submit my head to that person. I must understand you to your root. That there are things you have dealt with. Hear me and hear me well. I used 23 to 25 years to pray against my foundation. So, I will not hand over my head to somebody to destroy what I have left out for 25 years. 
I won't. Moses Suleiman said, he was in a program. And the man of God said, I must lay hands on everybody. And he said, me, you will not lay hands on me. He said, the Lord said to him, don't allow that man to lay hands on you. The man came and said, I want to lay hands. He said, no, you won't lay hands on me. Why, sir? I, I don't know, but don't just lay hands. Lay hands on others. He said, one week after, police arrested the man with three human heads. A pastor. He was arrested with three human heads. He was a sorcerer. He was a diviner running a church, a necromancer, an enchanter. An occult person on the pulpit. And he would have transferred that error. Oh, I pray for you today. Every error in your bloodline. May that error not bypass you to your children. May it not. May it not be transferred. May it not be transferred. I command pattern of poverty, pattern of setback, pattern of hardship, pattern of miscarriage, pattern of barrenness, pattern of failure at the age of breakthrough. Make that pattern be broken. Yeah! It is broken. Finally, before we pray, does a pattern of sexual immorality in that family. Sexual immorality can leave the, the level of temptation to the level of pattern. Sir, sexual immorality can leave the level of temptation to the level of what? Of pattern. It can leave. It can leave. It can lead to the dimension of pattern. When people exhibit undue sexual behavior, when it becomes abnormal, then there is a problem. There is. What you read in the paper, a man of 60 having a carnal knowledge of a six-year-old, four-year-old child. That is not temptation. That is a disorder. It is what? Oh, you, it is beyond what a psychologist can cure. It is a mental disorder and a pattern. Because what are you going to achieve in, in such an estate? An immature estate. What are you achieving in that field? So, we see Reuben, the father called him. In chapter 49 of Genesis, from verse 1, the father called him. Verse 3. Reuben, thou art my firstborn, my might, and the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity, and the excellency of power, unstable as water. Thou shalt not excel because thou wentest up to thy father's bed. Then defilest thou it and went up to my couch. On due sexual behavior, Reuben slept with his father's concubine, with his father's wife. Reuben, oh, what would, what would have come on your head to even think of molesting your father's wife or your father's girlfriend? That your father is going out with a woman and the woman stupidly comes to you and wants something funny with you and you oblige yourself. That child is under a curse. That child is under a curse. That you share what your father is sharing. That child is under a curse. The manifestation of obnoxious sexual behavior. 
Ah, uh, say it's our fifth cousin. Ah, uh, no problem. You can play. No limitation. No boundary. So he did it. And the father kept quiet and waited for the judgment day. And this was the judgment day where people will be allotted their destinies in life. And this one was a prophet and he sat as a prophet and began to speak into their future and say, you, this is what you ought to be. Oh, but this is what you are going to be. May I tell you where Reuben is today? Reuben is the nation called France. Reuben is France. Now imagine where France would have been on earth today. Imagine that if on the cross France has been able to colonize Niger, Cameroon, Côte d'Ivoire, Chad, the delicious countries that are causing terrorism, Syria alone, and the mostly places in Africa. Now, look at France without a curse. Look at France as the excellency of my might. Sir, no nation would have rivaled France on earth. No nation. Sir, no nation. If like this, France still has a voice in the committee of United Nations and is counted among the five P's, then what would have happened if France did not enter into the father's couch to desecrate him? Oh, immorality kills the strength of a man. Show me a man that cannot go far. I will show you a man that immorality has killed. I will show you a man that has given himself into sexual immorality. Look at Samson. Samson went far in life. Oh, he was, he was testing the altars of women. He was testing until he came to Delilah. And Delilah was not just a woman. Delilah was a pinfall. Delilah gave him a pinfall. And you can be seated here as a worker in the church. But you are still diving on the altar of immorality. Listen to me. It will kill your finances. It will kill your spiritual life. It will kill your passion for God. It will kill you as a person. And finally, the woman will lead you somewhere. And be looking at you the way Delilah was looking at Samson. She collected her money and walked out. I'm telling you. Go and ask Samson. And Samson will tell you, oh, that to play in the field of immorality is bad. That it is wrong. Sir, there is nobody that does not have sexual play pressure. There is nobody that doesn't have sexual pressure. You need to bring that sexual pressure and kill it. You need to bury it. You need to crucify it. You need to nail it on the cross. You need to nail it. Yes, you need to nail it. How do you nail it? Oh, three days dry fasting. Three days dry. Lord, kill immorality. Kill the desire for sexual whatever. Lord, kill it. Three days. Oh, I off my phone. I go back. Another seven days of fast. Oh, nights of prayer. Lord, Oh, I bring my body, my life, and I nail it. Father, this thing, I saw it in my grandfather. I heard of it. It was in my father, Lord. And I'm seeing it in me. Oh, how long can I cope with it? Lord, even as a pastor, I'm seeing the manifestation. Lord, oh, I cannot control it. But father, I want this thing to be buried. I want it to die. Kill it, kill it. Lord, kill it, kill it, kill it. There's no perfect person. But you need to bring it to the altar and let fire catch it. But it runs. Oh, I've seen families that immoral pattern is the mother is married to a father but has somebody outside. The daughter, oh, is married but keeping another man outside. 
All the children, all of them, their legs are like this. They are like this. You can't see them and their legs are on ground. The legs are flying. Going to Immoral Avenue. All the women. Have you not seen? They say, don't marry in that family. All of them are prostitutes. Don't. They have a name. It is their pattern. I saw somebody in Calabar befriended a daughter and also befriended a mother. Ah, this is sacrilegious. It is what? It is sacrilegious. I saw Kai. And that day, the man was not looking for the mother of the woman. The mother said to the child, he said, do you understand me? As you are going, collect money from him. Oh, don't come back empty handed. There is nothing in this house. Ah, sacrilege. 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 Oh, if your mother was like that, and here you are, you see that such a pattern wants to evolve in your life. Sir, today, 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 madam, today, you can kill that pattern. You can bury it. You can frustrate it. So, Ruben did this. Kai. What, what is that kind of sin called? It transgressed from incest to what? To what? I don't know. Whether it's, a, whether, it, whether it's, it's poly polyandry or what, I don't even know what that kind of iniquity is. That somebody goes to his father's wife, his father's concubine. It was not long in Genesis 38. Oh, we see a woman called Tamar. Tamar got married to A. A came to make to sleep with Tamar. Oh, the Bible says he pulled out and the thing split on the ground. His younger brother entered into that office. The same thing happened. Ah, they arrested Tama and said, you're a husband killer. Go inside the house. So she went in. And she heard that her father-in-law, Judah, was going to Timnath to share the sheep. The woman removed the garment of her widowhood and threw it away. And came by the well where her father-in-law was. And both of them negotiated. The man just looked at the woman and said, ah, oh, this prostitute, turn, turn, let me enter. Oh, I have said it. Some men lack courtesy. They lack courtesy. Even when they want to approach a woman, ah, it is with strong mouth because they think they have money. Judah was a wealthy man. Oh, there was no checking language at all. There was nothing. Oh, pretty one. He just came. He said, Don, Don. I said, Don. Which kind of life? You must learn language of romance. It is difficult, to, but you have to do what? Yeah. You have to learn it. Children, you are my problem. Children. You can see a man that wants to have his wife. Oh, he doesn't know the right language to communicate. He will just look at the man. Let me use an Ibibio man as an example. That one is a romantic language. But it's coming from the University of Illiteracy. Because he doesn't understand the language. Please, I won't use English. Let children not catch my language. Oh, I will give you a toothpaste that will change your tongue. Yeah? I will give you a toothpaste that will change your tongue. So you learn the language of romance. It's a tongue! No man. A tongue. Give me something. Is that? Let us finish it. Later I will come. Oh, immorality has made people to sign check. To do what? Oh, the man does not have money. The woman said, give me check. You're right there. If I were you, I would put it there. At the back, I had no money to pay for the fornication. Please, please tell her, pay her. She's the person of immorality. Nothing! He said, give me! He said, oh, what I have now? I just have uh, my staff. I will, I will give you a kid. He said, no. The kid is not the whatever you have, give to me. Surrendered his bracelet 
his signet, his staff of authority. Sir, immorality can make you to sell out your dignity. You can sell out your dignity. Oh, because you want to relieve your sexual urge and pressure. You can sell out your honor. Somebody can even see you and say, ah, man of God. He said, leave that man of God something. Man of God is not there. This thing is he he something of the flesh. <laughs> am, I, am I not a human being like you? Leave that thing. It's a shame. It's a shame for a man of God to get to that level and get to that dimension. It is a shame. There are people that are looking up to you. Oh, when you fail, it is not just you that fail. Your generation fails. Your generation. Your children behind. There was sexual immorality there. Oh, Judah committed incest with his son's wife. Committed incest. Oh, the Bible says when Judah did that, God suspended the program of kingship for Judah. So you can see in Deuteronomy chapter 23 verse 2 he said a bastard shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord to the tenth generation. So for ten generations Judah did not produce a king. That was why they took Saul from the tribe of Benjamin to become a king. The Bible says in those days there were no kings in Israel and every man did the way he liked. So you had judges. It was because of the sin of Judah that Deborah came. It was because of the sin of Judah that Gideon came. That Balak came. That we had all those judges. That we had Samson. If Judah had not committed that incest, you will not hear of Samson. You will not hear of Barak. You will not hear of Gideon. You will not hear of Deborah. So God suspended the program of kingship for 10 generations. Oh, you can count from the book of Ruth chapter 4 if we want to count 10 generations. David was the 10th generation. David was the 10th generation. A generation is 20 to 30 years. So, it took God 280 years. The throne was empty because somebody committed sexual immorality. On the 10th generation, David came up. When David came, that pattern of immorality was still on. Amnon, his son, went and slept with his sister and resurrected the pattern that their great great grandfather Judah had done. Amnon slept with his sister. There was chaos in the family. Oh, the sin of Reuben resonated, and Absalom went on his father's couch and slept with all the concubine of, of David. Stand to your feet as we pray. Lift up your hand of fire. Say, my father, my father. Oh, I didn't hear your voice. Say, my father, my father. As I begin to pray now. Begin to pray now. Every pattern. Every pattern. Every negative pattern. Every negative pattern. In my bloodline. In my bloodline. As I pray. As I pray. I command that pattern. I command that pattern. Out of my life. Out of my life. Begin to fire prayer. My father, my maker. As I pray now. I command every negative pattern out of my life, out of my life, every negative pattern working in my family, working in my life. I command it now, out of my life. I pray you out, I pray you out, I pray you out. Oh, you negative pattern, what are you waiting for? Your time is up. Expire now, expire now, expire now, expire now, expire now. Bakada Espire now, espire now, espire now, espire now, 
Espano, 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 I Jesus, mighty name we pray. Amen. Listen to me. There was a time the Lord appeared to me and said to me, you will go far in life if you avoid women. I've not said this before. And, and brought pictures of women before me and said, you will go far in life. He, he called my name. He said, wait a minute, you go far if you avoid immorality. Oh, I was still a young person. He said, the only thing that will stop you in this life is immorality. If you can handle it, you will be a great man on earth. I will make you a statue if you can handle immorality. I said, Lord, is that what you are saying? He said, yes. And he brought faces of women and showed me. And said, when you handle immorality, you have handled your destiny. Sir, this thing called immorality, it is in the bloodline. It is in the bloodline. And God began to tell me, pray. You have to pray. You have to pray. You have to pray. He said, look at the battles that lay ahead of you tomorrow. Things like this, things like that tomorrow. Things like that tomorrow. Now, you will not understand why you like hearing me say these things and mention immorality. I said them because I am talking to myself. I'm directly talking to myself. So when I mention them, I caution myself. Not, I, 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 I don't care about you, but I care about my life. Because you may not want to repent, but I want to work with God the way he wants me to work with him. So I keep saying these things because it has something to do with me. It has a place in my destiny. It has a path in my destiny. Sir, I have put my neck on the line. That immorality is a no-no. I put my neck. Hear me. If immorality wants to kill me, I will go to doctor and they castrate me. And I make heaven. And I go far. Oh, there is nothing immoral in life. There is no salary for it. There is no building attached to it. There is no honor attached to it. If I work as a castrated person and I make heaven, then I'm okay with myself. When I go to the other side, I will enter my habitation and I will find rest. Are you hearing me? You will take a prayer. Say, my father, my father. My father, my father. As I pray. As I pray. Every immoral pattern. Every immoral 
pattern. In my bloodline. My bloodline. Father. Father. I cost that pattern. I cost the pattern. I cost that pattern. I that pattern. I that pattern. Begin to fire pray. Oh Lord, my Father. As I begin to pray, every negative pattern, every immoral pattern in my bloodline, I cast you now. I cast you now. Oh, you blood pattern. Oh, you immoral pattern in my bloodline. What are you waiting for? You are cursed. You are cursed. I cast you now. 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 Immoral pattern in my bloodline. I cast you now. 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 I kill you now. I cause you now. I command you to die. I bother you now. I bother you now. I bother you now. I bother you now. In my bloodline, I cut you now. 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 I got you now. I got you now. From my bloodline. I got you now. I got you now. From my bloodline. Aspire. 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 Jesus, my name we pray. Amen. Ah! Jacob, turn his hand and put the right hand on the younger child and put the left hand on the senior. And say, oh, I am a carrier of pattern. I, I, I want to maintain the family order. Sir, so you are going to pray. Any power that wants to maintain family pattern and does not want that pattern to change this morning, let the person that is holding the pattern of the family let his hand cut off. Let his hand be cut off. Whoever is standing as a priest, as a priestess, enforcing the, the pattern, enforcing the family order, the order where first bonds ah, are under and the second are on top. The pattern of miscarriage, the pattern of barrenness, the pattern of failure, the pattern of struggling, the pattern of laziness. Say, my father, my maker. My father, my maker. I did not hear your voice. Say, my father, my father. My father, my father. As I pray now, as I pray now, I speak to my father's house. I speak to my father's house. I speak to my mother's house. I speak to my mother's house. I speak to my foundation. I speak to my foundation. Whosoever 
whatsoever. He's sustaining the family order. The sustaining the family order. The family pattern. The family pattern. Pattern of failure. Pattern of failure. Pattern of delay. Pattern of below. Pattern of backwardness. Pattern of backwardness. Pattern, pattern of stagnation. Pattern of unmoving. Pattern of poverty. Pattern of poverty. As I pray now. As I pray now. I command. I command. That man. That woman, that woman behind the pattern. Behind the pattern. God, 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 God. And let the pattern God. end. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. God, God, oh God. Whosoever that is sustaining, that is keeping the family pattern in my father's house, in my mother's house, in my foundation, as I pray. Oh God, I come out. Any man, any woman, whosoever sustaining the pattern of my father's heart, come on, you know, da, 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 I come on, any more, get in the family pattern. I come on, you to the Rabada Badada Rabada Baha. We can't break a deep racada. Who make a calabalasta? Who call a big calabracada? Who make a kayaba wakana? Oh, one day I had to call somebody in my father's house and I asked certain questions. I said, tell me the pattern in this family. And they told me the pattern. I said, wow. You mean it exists in my house? They said, yes. I said, oh, tell me about the women. And they told, told me what befalls the women in the family. I said, the men, they began to count. The first, 
Oh, this one like this, like that, like that. These are the things that happen. I stood up from that place. I said, no, it can never happen to me. I have to break this pattern. I have to destroy it. Let me tell you the truth. These were the things that drove me into the place of prayer. When I heard of the pattern, I went to prayer. I did not go to sleep. Oh, this is how night prayer started. This is how it started. From the age of 16, I began to seek the face of God. I said, Lord, this thing must change. If this pattern is in this house, then Lord, and I'm to be a preacher, then I cannot inherit this pattern. The Bible says, and Joseph said to his father, my father, it is not so. This thing has to change. It must change. Lord, my, my father, I don't agree. You can, you can cry out to them. You can say, no, it is not so. It must not be so. It shouldn't be so. I cannot be alive and see it happen. How can you have a father be alive? And your child is going through the pattern of your house. No, mother, here is your daughter. And your daughter is going through the same pattern. What is happening happened to your elder sister. You are seeing it in your face, daughter. It has to die today. You have to say, no, it shall not start. Neither shall it come to pass. Say, my father, my father. My father, my father. As I pray now. As I pray now. Every occurrence. Every occurrence. Every occurrence. Every occurrence. Anything that happens. Anything that happens. In my bloodline. In my bloodline. And I am seeing it in my life. And I am seeing it in my life. I am seeing it in my children. I see it in my church. I see it in my finances. I'm seeing it in my finances. I see it in my marital life. I see it in my marital life. As I pray now. As I pray now. I command. I command. That disorder. Oh, disorder. That pattern. That pattern. Yeah. 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 And I see in the life of my ancestors, and I'm seeing it in my life. I'm seeing it in the life of my children. Oh Lord, as I pray, I declare and decree it cannot be so. It can proceed, it proceed no further. I cannot continue anymore. It cannot continue. I end up pattern. I end you now. I terminate you now. You negative pattern. Ancestral pattern, generational pattern, bloodline, family, bloodline, maternal pattern. What are you waiting for? Inspire today. I own you now. I own you now. I own you now. Inspire. 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 Jesus, mighty name we pray. Oh, man. oh, the Bible says it was in Jira. Abraham told the lie in Jira. When Isaac came, the same place, Isaac told the lie in the same Jira. Sir, what is the import of this? Oh, it means that where your father fell, you can fall. Your father fell in immorality, you can fall there. Your mother fell in immorality, you can fall there. Your mother fell financially, you can fall. Your father fell financially, you can fall. The same place, the same point, where he lied, his first son came, and he told a lie in the same place. You can see that the way your father treated your mother, you are also doing your wife like that. You are doing your wife the same thing. That is how your father behaved with your mother. And today, you have carried your father's shoe. You are also tormenting your wife. You are also maltreating your wife. You can't even give feeding money. You walk out of the house and do any harm that you like. Ah, sir, it is a pattern. It is a pattern. You have to fight that pattern together. Oh, you have to fight it. You have to fight it. Even if your wife is hungry, it doesn't mean anything to you. Because it is a bloodline matter. Like fat dad, like sword. Like fat dad, like sword. You're going to cry. Ah! Where my father fell. Lord, I refuse to fail. Where my mother fell. I refuse to fail. What befell my father? 
Lord, let it not befall me. What befell my mother? Lord, let it not befall me. Say, my Lord, Father, my Father. I pardon. As I begin to pray now, as I begin to pray now. I command. Oh. What befell my father? What befell my father? Let it not befall me. Let it not befall me. What befell my mother? What befell my mother? Let it not befall me. Let it not befall me. Pattern of my father. The order of my father. Pattern of my mother. Get out of my life. Begin to pray. Oh God, I do whatever that befell my father was ever that befell my father. The pattern of my father. The pattern of my Come on, deal with it now. Oh God, what befell my father shall not befall me. What befell my mother shall not come upon me. It shall not. What attacked my father shall not attack me. What brought my father down cannot bring me down. I stand against it. I stop it right now. It will not manifest in my life. What it ended my father? What ended my mother? Cannot end me. You battle of the bloodline. I stop you right now. I stop you, my generation. I stop you by my life. I stop you now. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Look up. Let's take the last prayer. Next week Sunday is going to be pure deliverance service. Forget about my birthday. That one will just snap it in 10 minutes. We cut a lot of things on Sunday and do the birthday celebration and move into the deliverance proper. A woman came to see me. There were many. So they gathered here. And um, she appeared and gave me a different story and said, Pastor, whatever I'm doing, oh, it doesn't prosper. I collected a shop. I invested this. I did this. I did that. And um, the Lord said, that is not her problem. He said, pray for me. I want to prosper. The Lord said, that's not a problem. I'm telling you, I heard the voice of God and said, my son, that's not a problem. Look at her face and take your eyes and look at her head. And I look at her face and I look at her head. The Lord said, what have you seen? I said, I see a python. He said, okay, ask her this question. Have you ever been finding yourself in the water with a man? 
And I asked her, she smiled. And said, yes. It is true. I find myself in the water with a man. And I heard God talking to me clearly. He said, this one is going through the marine ancestry pattern. I said, Lord, what is it? Ah! And the Lord took me to her village. And I saw an altar. And I saw a deity, two deities, a male and a female. And I saw her being installed as a priestess. And she was commanded to operate a prayer house. And that man was assigned to be her husband. And her prosperity was disconnected from every other thing and tied to the prayer house. And they said, this woman is going to be a global prophetess. <laughs> and I said to her, madam, this is your problem. And here is this python. And this python is the prophet and is the one to tell you everything you are to say to people that come to meet you. He said, Pastor, it is true. Oh, they told me to set up the altar and put a table and begin to run prayer house. Oh, that great, great persons will be coming to consult me. And I said, yes, that is the only way you are to prosper. In the arrangement of your family pattern. He said, they told him how to come that they should come about, about, about a manner for her. That she will not do it. Sir, I saw a human being that was an altar of marine deities. As she walked, you could see the aura of demonic beings going with her. And I asked her, how do you live with your husband? Because somebody like you, a man, so can, supposed not to. Can I shock you? The husband is financially dead. And she's the one feeding the man. And there are people listening to me now. Your father was doing well. And it came to pass your mother is the one taking care of your father. Even till now. And if you don't handle it, it's your wife that will take care of you. Pattern. That's the last pattern we are going to handle today. The pattern of ancestral marine bondage ancestral marine bondage that pattern the spirit that married your father is still there with you the one that married your grandmother is still with you a young woman came to this church and said pastor i have written jam for four years no admission i want admission and i put my hands upon her to pray lord give her admission the lord said no admission for a priestess I removed my hand. I said, ah, you are. Listen, why? She's, she's laughing. I said, that's what you are. You cannot be a Zengwai and be in the university. Those ones stay in the forest. And they look for leaves. He said, Pastor, what do you mean? I said, my friend. He said, this is my mother. I said, mother, call a senior member of your house and find out. If your great grandmother was not an Ezenwai, call now and find out. They place a call. I stopped the prayer and they made the call. They returned the call and they said the woman was Ezenwai and that this her daughter is to inherit that office. So I, I, I carried her pray, removed that pattern, disconnected her from the pattern. I said, Go and get admission. One week after I met her, she said, Pastor, I have been offered admission in the university. When pattern don't go, there are certain things that cannot come. Lift up your hand to fire. Say, my father, my father. My father, my father. As I begin to pray, thy command, oh. every ancestral marine pattern, every ancestral marine pattern. attacking my life. Attacking my life. Die. 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 Ancestral marine pattern in my life, I command you. Da, 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 da. I am a copper to the land of the ballad. Da, 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 da,
Shake it, put a car. In procure And so on. Yeah, kapari. They got a new one. Bala beshala. He's a crooked to bala gashaka vibrante. He loves us so to be. In the name of Jesus. Da 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 da. Shaka bala kata ke brigade. In bala kata ke brigade. Take it out. Take it out. The pattern of marine powers. The capale kate ke brigade. In pale kate ke brigade. Ra capale kate ke. Ra kote kete ke diga da ke diga diga de. Ra capale kate ke brigade. Le kate ke brigade ke de. Ra kate ke brigade ke brigade. The capale kate ke brigade. In pale kate ke brigade. The pale kate ke brigade. Ra capale kate ke brigade. The kate ke brigade ke brigade. Le kate ke brigade ke brigade. Ra kate ke brigade. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Amen. Lift up your hands. Let me pray for you. Balana bakasuku brigade anteli la brash taya. Kamande sala katuze koza linte gimbra katai. Every power of the pattern. This one's Lord standing here that have been bound by the power of pattern, the pattern of failure, the pattern of sexual bondage in the dream, the pattern of losing money, the pattern of failure. Academic stagnation, marital stagnation, financial stagnation, stagnation in every area of life. That pattern that was transferred to them by their father, grandfather, grandmother, by mother. Every pattern, pattern, pattern. Whatever pattern it is. Pattern of stagnation, arriving late, achieving late, succeeding late in life. I command every altar and spirit responsible for that pattern. Every demon in the father's house, in the mother's house, uh, that is responsible for that pattern, to command that pattern to thrive in that family, by the power of the Holy Ghost, I command that spirit, get out! Amen! Get out! Amen! I say 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 get out! Amen! I command pattern of barrenness, there's a family here. You are of Anang extraction. You are of Anang extraction. There is a delay in marriage in your house. There is a delay. Uh, the women take long to marry. It takes long. There, you are of Anang extraction. I can't really place your direction. But hear me and hear me well. In the next six months from today, there is going to be a shift in that house. Amen. I said there is going to be a shift in that house. Amen. The women of that house will begin to experience divine visitation. Amen. I stretch my hands to that house and I command by the power of the Holy Ghost that deity, that pattern that is running in the in the ancestry of the women, in the bloodline of the women, I command that power. Aspire! Amen. Hayakabata galabakata. Librokoto, lift up your hand. In the kabrin the kabala kabashita kaya. From the back to the front, to the side, to the left. Whoever is here that is bound under a spell, under the power of familiar spirit, that the pattern of your father's house has frustrated, does not allow you to marry, does not allow pregnancy to happen, does not allow you to enter into your divine destiny, does not allow you to get a job, does not allow you to experience a breakthrough. That pattern appears in the dream. Dream demons, dream assassination, dreams attack, dream arrows, bondage of the bloodline that is attacking people. Bondages appearing like dreams. Huh? That when you have such a dream, ah, you experience financial attack, you experience financial losses, you experience setback academically, you experience setback maritally. Right now, I command every power ministering that pattern ministering that pattern wherever you are wherever you are now come out come out i command the spirit behind such attack i command the power behind such attack right now right now wherever you are hosting in the body of these people i command
and you alter. I command you stronghold. Get out. Amen. I say get out. Amen. I say get out. Amen. I say get out. Amen. There are seven women here. When you gather money, you gather and you want to do something good, something will happen. Ah, uh, something will happen. It is either you meet a wrong person, will introduce you to a wrong business, or you meet a wrong man. Certain things will happen, and you will lose the money and start afresh. And you start afresh. You always start afresh. It has happened to you separately. You are here in this meeting. Hear me and hear me well. It is the spirit that attacked your mother. And that spirit is leading you right now, 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 right now. I command by the power of the Holy Ghost, that spirit of pattern, that spirit of poverty, that spirit of losses, that spirit of shortage that is attacking your life by the authority in the name of Jesus. You woman, I command that demon behind that affliction. Get out! I command that spirit to go. I command that spirit to go. I command that spirit to go. Amen. I say go. Amen. I say go. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Whatever is a pattern. Oh, that when you get to the time of success, sickness will come. Troubles will come. You gather money for sickness. You gather money for wrong things. That issue is expired right now. Amen. The pattern that has taken hold of your brothers and sisters, it is hereby broken. Amen. Sicknesses that are pattern, ulcer, diabetes, hypertension, cancer, whatever it is, incurable diseases, sicknesses in the liver, in the kidney. Oh, pains in the bones. What your mother went through and you are going through. What your father went through and you are going through. Today, by the power of the Holy Spirit, that sickness is broken. Amen. It is broken. Amen. Be healed. And be free today. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Put your hands together for Jesus. Be seated. God bless you. Please, if you are here and um, you want to pay your tithe, come forward. Come forward, no time, please. Next Sunday, I invite everybody seated here. It's going to be my birthday. When you come, you know my age. That's if you come. I invite everyone seated here. Please. That birthday will be celebrated in this house. You eat. But you can also come with food. You can come with drink. Not alcohol. Wine. Please come. It's going to be a moment of feasting. And it's also going to be a moment of deliverance. We're going to one-on-one. -on -one. Maybe I can come to this pulpit around 9.30. I'll be on the pulpit already. By 9.30, I'll be up here. I would have started preaching. Between 9.30 and quarter to 10, I would have started preaching. Praise God. Lift up your tight. Begin to bless the Lord. Bless the Lord for the tight. Every Monday night here from 10 is a deliverance service. I practically push a deliverance meeting to Monday night. Please. If you want to experience the hand of God, in the area of deliverance, be here Monday night by 10. You cannot escape the testimonies of that meeting. I tell you the truth. You can't escape it. Witchcraft deliverance, whatever kind of deliverance, that night. And so shall it be in Jesus' precious name. God bless you. Put in my hand. You are blessed. You are blessed. The Lord bless you. God prosper you. God prosper you. The Lord prosper you. The Lord bless you. You are blessed. The Lord prosper you. God prosper you. Jesus prosper you. 
in Jesus' precious name. And one of the avenues that brings blessings to this ministry is a radio program. I think this is the only thing since we started this church and you've known me that I've come out to say so into. So into that radio program. This quarter has is ending, I think, next Saturday. Or this coming Saturday. This quarter ends. And you are looking for a way to put money. You have never heard me stand here and ask you bring money for this, that. But I want you to put money in evangelism. Honestly, after the service, if you want to come, meet me. I'll pray for you. You have 100,000. You have 200. You have 50. You have 10. You have 5. Come. I pray for you. Honestly, the souls that are one, lives. A lot of persons come to me, pastors, through that program. Some people contribute to that program. So after church, I'll just be seated here briefly.